It appears that lots of people are interested in a care and breeding video for this fascinating little arachnid, Dinochiris arizonensis, the boulder pseudoscorpion. Hi, Russ of Aquarimax Pets here. I've been keeping and breeding this pseudoscorpion quite successfully for some time now, and in this video I'm going to show you how to do the same. I have to say that I learned all I needed to know to keep and breed this pseudoscorpion species from Kyle Candillion at roachcrossing.com and Will of Will's Bug Room. Kyle is also the source of my starter group of pseudoscorpions. You can check out the interview that the three of us had on the topic of pseudoscorpions up here. Contact information for both is also available in the description. I would also like to clarify that this care and breeding information applies specifically to the pseudoscorpion species Dinochiris arizonensis. It may well work for some other species, but I have not kept other species, so keep that in mind if you're interested in working with a different pseudoscorpion. So let's start with the enclosure. The only enclosures that I've used are 32 ounce deli cups with the ventilated lids sold for use with fruit fly cultures. They appear to be the perfect size for a colony of pseudoscorpions, but perhaps more importantly, the fine ventilation is such that it allows for gas exchange without permitting even the most minuscule pseudoscorpion or its prey items an opportunity to escape, and as long as they are properly secured. Young pseudoscorpions are so small that I would have concerns about puncturing a lid with pinholes or even using all but the very finest fabric mesh. In short, the containers intended for fruit flies work well, and there may be some risk of escape if the vent holes are any larger. Next, let's talk about the substrate. The base layer of substrate is about two inches of play sand mixed with moistened but not soaked coconut fiber. I think there are about two parts play sand to one part coconut fiber, but I don't think the ratio is particularly critical. The next layer is about two to three inches of wood chips of varying sizes. I purchased hickory chips, which are sold for use with smoking meats. I purchased a bag of these wood chips at the grocery store in the barbecue area for about three US dollars, and I'll put links in the description. The original colony of pseudoscorpions that I got from Kyle also had some of the larger coconut fiber chunks mixed with the wood chips, but this doesn't seem to be critical as I didn't have any for the second culture and it's doing just fine. When setting up that second culture, I tried to make sure that some of the larger, flatter wood chips were right up against the sides of the deli cup to improve visibility of the pseudoscorpions. They tend to hang out on these uh, flatter chips right up against the plastic so you can get a good view of them. Now it's time to add springtails. As you might guess, the springtails are there not only as a cleanup crew, but as a food item. I'm sure the adult pseudoscorpions snack on springtails in addition to the other food that I offer, but the young pseudoscorpions really depend on juvenile springtails as a staple food item. You might ask whether it matters which species of springtail you use. Well, the recommendation of Kyle was to use Cinella curvaceta, and that's what I use, and the reason he cited is that the springtail species, this particular springtail species, is somewhat tolerant of a range of humidity levels. That being the case, Rather than hug the base layer of the substrate, Cinella curvaceta ranges throughout the enclosure up into the wood chips, providing better hunting opportunities for the pseudoscorpions. Before I talk more about feeding, hydrating, and breeding pseudoscorpions, permit me to give a shout out to the marvelous team of people who support this channel on Patreon. For as little as one US dollar a month, this team helps ensure that I can keep producing and improving the educational content that you're here for sharing what I've learned and continue to learn about the amazing creatures that we share this planet with is one of my favorite things to do. And you, patrons, are making it possible. If you'd like to help, please find the link at the end of this video or in the description. And now on to feeding and watering your pseudoscorpions. Water is a simple matter. Just keep an eye on the color of the base substrate and on the activity level of the springtails. If the substrate begins to become lighter in color, or the springtails begin to hug the surface of the base substrate without venturing higher up into the wood chips, it's probably time to add a few teaspoons of water. You can just trickle some purified water down the side of the container. 
If it pools on the surface of the base substrate, it's probably dried out a little bit too much. But if you see it soak in, it's probably okay. Fortunately, Dinochirus pseudoscorpions can handle dryness a little better than some other invertebrates, as they're adapted to desert life. But of course you don't want to stress them, nor do you want to wipe out the springtail population. Feeding the colony of pseudoscorpions is pretty easy too. As I said, springtails are food for your pseudoscorpions, so are any mites that might wake their way into the culture. However, for a thriving colony, you'll probably want to add more food. Wingless and or flightless Drosophila melanogaster fruit flies are a great staple food item for the adult Dinochirus, and probably the older juveniles as well. In fact, I would go so far as to say that you should have some experience keeping and breeding fruit flies before you start keeping pseudoscorpions. The maintenance of the fruit flies is considerably more involved than the care of the pseudoscorpions themselves, so you'll really want to get that down first. In terms of feeding frequency, I usually add a few dozen fruit flies to each pseudoscorpion enclosure about once a week or whenever I notice that their numbers have decreased substantially. To help lengthen the lives of the fruit flies, and to give the springtails a little extra food as well, I put in some small bits of fruit, such as apple or banana, on top of the wood chips. These can be removed if they get moldy, but make sure that you're not throwing away any pseudoscorpions as you remove them. Changing the substrate is not something that needs to be done often, since we're dealing with a fairly light bio-load, and the springtails and microorganisms in the culture help to deal with wastes. However, splitting the culture, as I will explain a little later, will help to refresh some of the substrate. So now let's talk about breeding Dinochirus arizonensis. This is quite straightforward if you start with about a dozen of them. That way you are nearly assured multiple males and females. Eventually you'll notice that there will be females carrying amber-colored, somewhat shiny eggs attached to the ventral surface. A few weeks later, you may be lucky enough to see some truly minuscule pseudoscorpions on the mother's back. Not long after that, they'll leave the female and begin fending for themselves. They may remain in the enclosure with the adults without issues, and do not require care different from that of the colony as a whole. Just make sure that the adult pseudoscorpions are well fed, and that there's a robust population of springtails to feed the juveniles, and they should do just fine. Eventually, your pseudoscorpion colony will reach carrying capacity, and the overall numbers of individuals will increase little, if at all. The culture can be maintained this way indefinitely, or you can choose to split the culture if you want to increase the number of pseudoscorpions. To do so, simply take a new enclosure and seed the new base substrate with a few tablespoons of the older base substrate to introduce springtails and microorganisms and so on, and do the same with the wood chips. Replace what you removed from the original culture with fresh substrate and wood, which helps to you know, maintain that substrate as well. If you include about a dozen adult pseudoscorpions and perhaps a few juveniles, you'll be good to go. I split my original culture about four months after I received it, and inside there were pseudoscorpions of all sizes. As I hope you have seen, Dinochirus arizonensis is not only a very intriguing arthropod, it's quite uncomplicated to keep and breed in captivity. If you have any additional questions about this species, please don't hesitate to let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Friday with live streams on Wednesdays all about aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell for notifications all so you don't miss my next video.